Homie is on the way to pick up the truck here. Should be interesting. But all right, boys, uh, we've done a lot of taking things apart. Putting things together, though, that's kind of hard. That's a little hard. Not that many. I'm going to show you that. Hold and then build to break. But yeah, boys, if you're enjoying the fun ones, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and send to every homie you know. Alright, let's give these dudes a call here. They say junk car removal. Any car, they take it for cash on the spot. Let's see. Everything except the and the engine's gone, and basically the entire truck is inside the bed of the truck. What's up, Disconnected the steering when we pulled the engine out, so I had to put that back just so we can roll her out of here. I'm gonna put Bert builds on the shipping label. So this package right here, this is the 600 horsepower 12 valve Cummins kit. Now, this will run you $1,700. Yes, you heard that right. $1,700. That's $1,700. So we have our AFC foot. This adjusts the fuel. Max travel kit. Delivery valves, 5 by 14 over injectors. Well, next day now, in the morning, cold. Got the heater going. Almost done, boys. Almost ready to start putting it back together finally, huh? But we got the AFC off. We're about to hook up the uh, power driven diesel AFC Live in cab tuning. Um, then we'll do the delivery valves, put the AFC back on. Wow, these things, I should probably put my covers on. These guys too. Probably. Then we'll do injectors, but we're getting there. So here's our AFC Live. New foot, new springs, screws. Adjusted the star wheel on the smoke screw. She should be ready to rip, boys, ready to rip. My glasses are fogging up, it's freezing out. And we we carry on, though, we carry on, because we gotta get her done. Gotta get this 12 valve built. Wow, why is my ceiling correct? So we're gonna take our 90, little tiny 90, from our power-driven diesel kit, and it's just gonna thread right into the top of our AFC Live. It's already got Teflon on there for us. The fitting spin, so you don't gotta worry about tightening it wrong. But yeah, we're gonna go time lapse. See what happens. I've got niche I can't scratch. I'm missing a piece that completes a whole part of me. An open wound scar to see. Everybody come here, gather round. Welcome to the freak show, the best in town. Should just twist out of the boot. Like so. Uh, taking these valve covers off, boys. Then we'll get the fuel lines. There's our air horn. Okay, now we can crack all our fuel lines. Cover time. One, two, three. Four, five, six, three quarter, Matco, three quarter, 
line wrench. See how it's got the V shape in it there? Helps you. So we're gonna go ahead and just crack every single line. Two, three, four, five. Toxic day one, started the outlaws for profit. All I do is write verses, no talking. All I do is put the work in, no option. This was everything I ever wanted. Created a legacy off of me, just being honest. And the fake ones hate, but it's all to no avail. They want to see me lose, but you know I never fail. So we got the valve out of the top of the pump here. So there's six of these guys that go into your fuel lines that pump fuel over into your injectors on this side. And uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, but each one, sorry. Each one of these things right here is our delivery valve. So we're gonna pull these guys out. And to pull those out, we're gonna use a little magneto. Pull the delivery valves out at a little bit of an angle so these springs don't fall out like I was saying. Then you're gonna use a magnet to pull the actual 025 out. Dude, so we got the turbo off there. This is our new turbo. Look at this absolute beaut of a turbo here, boys. Sent to us from our amazing friends over at PowerDrivenDiesel.com. And this, of course, is our AG351 CW with a 68 or 67 millimeter, I forget, compressor wheel, billet compressor housing, billet wheels, compound, uh, what do they call them? Not compound. I don't know. I'll put a screenshot of what turbo this is up, but this could solve our issues, boys, because our Fummins is stalling out on the highway, so we can't have that. And my theory is she's dumping too much fuel and not getting enough air, or our governor springs are messed up. So, yeah, we still haven't adjusted the timing either, and I know once you give these Cummins timing, like, they turn into rockets, so. Go ahead and pop our hood open here. Release our safety ratchet strap. It just snowed and hailed, so <clears throat> a little bit of water on there, even though we just washed it too. T3 flange. It's got four studs with some nuts, right? So you got four studs, that's easy. You got a thread. Got a thread up top here for your turbo feed. So that's going to feed your oil into your turbo. Then on the bottom, you have a drain, of course. So you have feed drain, hooking it up to the flange with your four studs, air intake, compressor boot, or not compressor boot, your intercooler boots. This feeds your intercooler. This air, air goes in, air gets blasted out, and this is your exhaust side. So you have to hook up your exhaust, oil intake, oil drain, air intake, intercooler, and the turbo to the manifold itself. And that's it. And then you have a turbo install. Okay, so first things first, we got to get our intercooler piping out of the way, disconnect our turbo feed and drain. I already loosened the clamp, the V-band for our hood stackage here. So we'll pull that out of the way, pull this out of the way, and then we'll start attacking, taking the turbo off with those 15 millimeter nuts that connect it to the exhaust manifold. And... These clamps right here, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter on all the clamps, 15 millimeters on all the bolts that connect the turbo to the exhaust manifold, 
and it's a 7 16th for the V-band. We were just making progress, boys. We're and about to pull the turbo off. I forget what the, the drain and feeds are, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah. Please say any negative thoughts that pop off when I hear people say... Yup, boys. This is New England. And this is why it's tough to live and tough to live here. It's hailing. In April. And it was just sunny five minutes ago. And then it was just sunny 15 minutes before that. Now it's hailing and raining. Yeah, no, it's hail. It's sort of like snow. As you can see, though, turbo is out. We just have our ugly manifold left, so we're going to get that off here now so we can get our new guy on there, new turbo in there, see what happens. Here's our, you know, our test bench next to the truck here. So we got Milwaukee, Milwaukee setup, turbo on our manifold. It's going to be sitting in the truck sort of like this, you know, so that's on the side, sitting down. We got to get our exhaust. I don't even know how it's going to fit, but it's got to fit some... Alrighty, boys, so we're gonna pop this ugly manifold off here. Look at that thing. Ew. Look at that. Please say anything negative, cause I just wanna hear it out your mouth, yeah. Give me fuel, it's a tool that I use to go ahead and run my f out, yeah. I take shots, I take loss, I make shots, I miss lots. I tell you get big box, you get yachts, you swing lots, and pop off a big shot. I ain't done chasing, got big dreams, bigger things, impatient. Who's at the top, think they need replacement? Who's at the top, think I'm gonna erase the face it? I don't give up quick, I don't give up, I won't give up this Cause I know that I want it, know that I'm on it, I'll make it, I promise You don't wanna fuck with me A slow burn like a disease Just tell me that I cannot show you things that you couldn't believe means there will be another beautiful day <laughs> with everything broken on the truck. Thankfully, we are making progress, boys, in breaking more things. Now, if TikTok wouldn't delete us, maybe we'd have a couple million on YouTube by now, too, but... Nope, just stupid TikTok. So. Um, I just gotta pick your brain on some stuff about one of the swap kits I got here, if that's alright. Kinda got a lot going on, but, uh... Okay. I sorta... I sorta know... Uh, uh, what's happening, but I'll give you the whole rundown, I guess. Um, so I got a 6.4 liter Ford swapped truck here with a, uh, okay. uh or, but it's got the five, nine, 12 valve Cummins in it. Okay. And so the swap was done like completely factory, like stock engine, never been touched, like bone stock out of a 95, uh, Dodge Ram pickup. And you know fi factory literally dead factory 5r ford stuff and like you know it ran and drove uh, mint you guys did the tuning and everything on it it was just slow but it, it was you know good good swap factory slow so then i've now got like five thousand dollars of a power driven diesel kit into it you know injectors turbo governor springs delivery valves the timing etc etc and yeah about a week after doing that my transmission literally exploded but it didn't it, it, it was you know so i know what was happening with it and it was kind of on its way out anyway so i kind of just kept diagnosing as i was going but uh so you know how if you put the truck in drive and like have a block under the tire or your foot on the brake it should idle at like 800 rpm or so yeah um, so I, I did that and like set that everything and it was running and driving better, 
you know, because I was fine-tuning the injectors and the timing and stuff, and it was running good finally. It was just the shifting, so it started yeah. it started slipping out at, like, highway speeds, you know, so, like, it was definitely a torque converter issue in my mind. I was thinking, like, you know, it would go, like, first, second, third, mint, and then, like, the turbo would light in fourth gear, because, like, it, the turbo wouldn't light every gear, you know, it'd be, like, sluggish, but still going fast, and then it would get to, like, fourth, uh -huh. it would get to, like, fourth gear, I wouldn't even move my foot, and the thing would start taking off, like, a rocket ship, you know what I mean? Okay. And then once it got to, like, 70, 80 miles an hour, it was just intense slippage, high speed, slip, 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 like, and then if I tried to slow down and downshift, it would stall out sometimes, even. Okay. Um, so, so I, did I, you retune it after you I, the tranny or no? I did not retune it. I took the transmission that blew out, and I've got one with a hundred, another 100,000 mile 5R that I was going to okay. put in. But, yeah. um, you know, I was thinking, like, I, it's literally, like, floating in front of the, the bell housing right now. But I'm like, hmm, I don't know if I want to put this in because, like, is it just going to blow up again? And then I start researching it last night, and I'm doing a ton of reading. Like, a ton of reading, and it's all, like... Oh, you're thinking it, because I posted some questions in, like, group chats on Facebook and stuff, and people are like, no, 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 your thinking is backwards, your engine is, like, sooting itself out, uh, people were like, oh, you know, your, your low stall speed seems logical, because I was like, do I need a low stall converter? And everyone was saying, no, 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 you can use the factory Ford converter, it's fine, and I'm like, I don't know, I'm having massive issues. And people are like, well, the diesel governor will respond to low stall and just governor up the engine to maintain, like, norm to maintain normal RPM. And that's sort of what was happening. Because, like, it would take off like a rocket. And then sometimes if it was going fast, it would just downshift to try and keep the RPMs where it wanted. You know what I mean? Sure. So yeah. it, it just wasn't, like, in sync. So I'm guessing it was the trans tuning that needed to be redone once all the, the horsepower was added, you know? Right. And definitely, the, probably the best thing you could do if we tuned it. You know, it's just a, once you get it running and driving, just take a data log and send it into our tuner and explain to them what all you changed on it. Yeah. You know, and then you can go through and tune it up, you know, give you a little different tune for it then. Yeah. Make sure it locks up. So, yeah. Because, yeah, right now you might be basically flaring it out of gear and then it can't grab again. Yeah, because yeah. it, it never locks up until it's going, like, 40 and, like, third or fourth gear, you know what I mean? Okay. Like, that's... Well, what I mean, those things do still have the adaptive learn all hooked up, so that's going to be... You can't just get in it and beat the hell out of it and expect it to shift, like, you know... It's still learning your driving habits for a while. Yeah, I mean, I did... The, hundred miles, so. Yeah, it's got, like three or four thousand on it as a factory truck and it was fine until i did the inject right. injectors turbo and like all this stuff so i'm thinking like uh does the trans tune like would it definitely have to get changed if you go from factory to like 500 horsepower right it would definitely or? yeah you're gonna want to probably do a revision on it for sure but would it you think it would cause the transmission to explode like mine did because mine just like blew fifth gear right out and then like the torque converter went and then all, like, uh, that sounds like something that was probably already happening to it yeah you know? but, yeah yeah but yeah i guess because like i said so it's been happening for a little while so like sometimes when i'd be like in drive on the brakes like the truck is trying to drive forward you know what i mean yeah that sounds like torque converter for sure <laughs> yeah. yeah so i'm like i'm like what yeah. the fuck yeah. Because it wasn't so like that for the first 4,000 miles or so. <laughs> yeah, so if you got a new trans, you put it in, and yeah, before you get in there. Coming after me, dude, they were like, what are you talking about? You don't need a torque converter. The 5R factory Ford converter is fine. And then, like, I don't know. I, I thought that, too. And then other people were saying that it would get messed up even more if I put a low stall in it. And then other people are saying that I need a low stall because the Cummins has such a lower RPM band. And then I'm like, well, that's probably, I don't know if I should put that in because then I don't know if I diagnose my transmission problem. So you see I'm going like left and right like crazy here, you know? Yeah, well, everybody's got an opinion. They're all, you know, internet warriors. They all know what's the best. So, yeah. You know, the factory Cummins torque converter was 17 to 1800. Uh, the Ford one was about 18 to 19, so you're talking a difference of 200 RPMs. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's really not that much. And like better. a low stall uh, is like 1600, so it's not even that much different yeah, anyway. Yeah, 17. Yup, so it's not that much lower. And guys think a little bit lower is better, so a lot lower must be much Way better. better. Yeah, it's going to be fast. Through, yeah, <laughs> then it starts dragging you through stop signs. Yeah. So, yeah. So, no, I mean, 
of all the conversion kits we sell, probably 90% of these guys are using a stock torque converter. Yeah, that's what I, that, I mean, that's what Dan's told me. I've talked to him a bunch about it, and uh, that's yep. why I still have the, the factory one in there. Um, but so, I, I yeah, I'm going to do what you said. I think that your plan is the best, throw it in there and just do another log right away. But I was. Yep, just do it right away, and yep, we'll do a revision and, and I, everything dialed in. And I was also, or I know for a fact that like my, I was talking to Power Driven Diesel, and they were saying that my governor springs might be one click too tight as well, because that can make, you know, you get a little loping action. But I feel like that yep. that would be more like you know it would do it when I'm in park too, like it would lope, lope, lope. It wouldn't, you know. It should. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. But all right. When it comes to tuning the engine, those guys would know. So. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I got any more questions for you guys right now. Sure. I'm just uh, yeah. right, I'm trying to think though, because I'm you know trying not to steal yeah. too much of your time, even though I know that's what you're there for. Oh yeah, no big deal. But yeah, I'm just trying to think of it scientifically. Don't take too much of the. Yeah, exactly. Help me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, kind of the reason we say that. Yeah. So what what is the stall speed anyway though? Cause like that's that like what does changing the RPMs like scientifically do? It just that's when you're trans that because it's not when it locks up, right? The stall speed. Yeah. It would be when there's uh, well, yeah, kind of it's not a zero slip. You can't really see, but that's when it's it's an impeller. You know, it's a variable drive hydraulic finned pump basically so that's when it's at a one-to-one -one engagement is at that rpm so that's when it's considered you know grabbing as hard as it's going to grab oh uh, so that's like that's so that's so basically stall is considered full send well that'd be like when you let the clutch out and it grabs kind of oh okay okay so it's full torque not like full speed yes okay exactly yep. okay so, yeah okay so, so yeah, yeah that, that would make sense more is, you know if you're pulling a lot, it'll kind of take off a little harder at a lower RPM. But yeah, right. like I said, some guys think if a little bit lower is good, then way lower is way better, you know. But that's not always the case. Yeah, because I mean, it it was. If you're dragging it below the torque curve. Because it, it was driving really good, like as a factory truck too. Like it shifted like one, two, three, four, five, six. Took it on the highway, drove eighty, like ten psi. Like would get up to twenty, thirty, like normally, like romping, and then you know started adding all this horsepower i'm blowing intercooler pipes off then i fixed that then i'm getting it running right now it's running right now i got transmission issues you know now it's like i'm fixing the trans wondering if that's even the problem you know it's like ah right yeah. so it's like a massive head yeah. scratch everyone's like oh the cummins is easy bro like i'm like dude like i've been messing around with this thing for eight months now yeah well, well they were uh they're a fun project, but yeah, everything's got its limitations, right? Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, that's what I do, definitely. Just uh, get it together and, uh, you know, try and do a data lock before you go out and drag race it and, you know, see what what we need to change on it, if anything. So. All right, all right. Yeah, that, that'll be my plan then. Okay. All righty, dude. Thank you. I'll call you if I need anything. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thanks for your call. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good one. Yeah. You bet. <clears throat> Call has been forwarded. You motherfucker, Hank. Automatic voice message. Five zero eight four four six.